now it's time to speak to our two famous authors, uh, uh, Harry and Amti. Thank you for joining. It's, it's a pleasure to Thank have you. you again. I'm very fortunate to have you twice a day. So um, I think this is a very interesting discussion that everybody is eager to learn about the, the future, the, the next step after the three, um, the, the, the standards that we have seen from, from 5G, from enhanced mobile broadband over ultra low latency and uh, massive type uh, communications. So what, what is the next step? So we, we, we see this new model experience expansion extension. So how would you uh, describe this next step uh, anti in experience, for example? Well, we take the experience. Um, so there we have, um, there are services like um, text to XR. So augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, which um, is something that basically you could support with the current 5G already, but now with this uh, 5G Advance, we'll take it further. We, for example, enable uh, users to move around so that there's a less interruption with, the, with, the, with these services, or we enable uh, the radio access network to be aware that this service is this kind of demanding service which has special video frame rates, etc., so that uh, you, you can do it efficiently uh, and support many devices simultaneously in, in a given cell. Interesting. So is that, uh, we read in the last months several times about the killer use case of, of XR. Is this it going to be? Is this what, what is going to be presented tomorrow tomorrow uh, uh, by, by Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook about the metaverse that is right up that alley of XR? Is this what we can expect? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can see that there's a lot of interest globally on the XR and uh, the analyst companies are indicating that the market could be even like a 300 billion by 2025. Uh, that is exactly when then 5G Advance will hit commercial market. And indeed, one com uh, kind of a practical example is, is Facebook. They are now developing a new service called Metaverse. And XR is now one part of the Metaverse where they are investing. So clearly, yes, it could be an important uh, kind of optimization of the 5G Advanced. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's tune in tomorrow and see what is coming because this, this sounds very exciting. And then resiliency is, is definitely one of the other things that we always hear in the, the 5G Advanced. W what is it about? What does it mean? Well, well, there we're basically looking solutions that um, if you think about many things today rely on the timing that is coming from the satellite networks. Take this banking industry, transportation industry, uh, power grids. Now, uh, the idea with this is that now 5G network could be that provide that as a sole solution or as a backup solution. If you think about solution that uh, satellite for some reason would not be available, either the satellite itself is, is, is not functioning or you have some underground facilities where you have some devices. Uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to ensure uh, antenna then in that situation with satellite visibility, but, but now you could get uh, this uh, through 5G network basically. Okay, super. Just a little reminder to the audience. If you have any questions for Harry and Antti, now is the moment to hit the tap and ask them. Thanks, we'll come back to you in a second. Okay, and then last but not least, we, we, we covered a bit experience expansion. What, what is that last extension? Very close to expansion, but what does it mean? Uh, what can we expect? Yeah, the idea basically in extension is that the same 5G radio can be used for many other use cases. I mean, today we are using 5G radio for the smartphone connectivity, home connectivity, but the target is that uh, that the radio has been designed in such a way that it can be used for many other connectivity cases. One example is, is low-cost uh, Internet of Things connectivity. And another other example is also so-called non-terrestrial networks, uh, meaning like satellite communication using 5G radio. One example is uh, train control, so communicating with the trains uh, and in terms of like safety. Another example is, is direct device-to-device uh, -device or car-to-car -car communication could be used for avoiding uh, like uh, collisions in the traffic. And then also one example is, is uh, drone optimization, so using 5G radio between the ground and, and, and drones. 
And, and clearly the benefit is that the same radio can now be expanded to many, many other use cases. Another example is also that the uplink coverage will be better in 5G advanced. Because if you can make your coverage area larger, then of course you can expand your potential kind of use cases of the 5G radio as well. And in general, we put more emphasis also on the, on the uplink performance, mm -hmm. because uh, uplink is often this kind of uh, resource that is, uh, is, is, is not so well available. If you have a traffic that has high downlink asymmetry, you put a lot of resources in this kind of networks in time domain for downlink. Then when you have to use the uplink, you need to get the really most out of the uplink so that uh, you are having still decent data rates in the uplink compared to what you can achieve to watch devices. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this yeah this becomes very very exciting. I see that there are many questions coming in from the audience, but I have my own question because I said this this on so so is this something? I'm getting thrilled. I'm I'm in Finland. I will travel back down to mainland Europe in a couple of days, so I have have to write my letter to Santa. Can I already start dreaming about getting a device or something that would? What, what, what is the timing of this, this story of 5G advanced? Uh, you can always write to Santa, but um, it will just take some time before the Santa can deliver because the specifications are expected to be ready uh, in, in, uh, in the beginning of uh, 24. Mm -hmm. So uh, take some time to fix all the issues. We would expect that maybe Christmas 25 would be the realistic uh, if you are speaking about those time slots that Santa will deliver his stuff. Okay, okay. I'll try to be patient, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay, um, questions from the audience. First of all, thanks for uh, those who have raised a couple of questions. The first one is, what are the main new enhanced features in 5G Advanced that will improve spectral efficiency compared to basic 5G? Mm. Indeed, there are some improvements in downlink, but even more, we are focusing now making uplink better. We already discussed that we want to make the uplink coverage better, but at the same time, we also would like to make the uplink capacity higher. And, and the technical solutions we are now focusing, one is, is uh, multi-cell reception, where the idea is that the mobile transmission can be received by multiple cells at the same time. Another example, uplink optimization is, is further uh, a higher order uh, MIMO, so further uh, increasing the number of MIMO layers in the uplink direction. We are also uh, improving the control channel and beamforming coverage, meaning that you can further extend your kind of reach of the control domain. And there are also some improvements for the uh, frequency domain shaping, where the idea is that even for the user plane or data coverage, you can extend that uh, further. So. So a lot of uplink things are going to be better in, in 5G advanced. Well, yeah, but it, it sounds clear that it, normally it's a hell lot of features for a couple of benefits, but here it's equal. It's like a huge amount of benefits uh, uh, in line with the features. Um, second question, are there enablers for easier uh, 5G rural coverage in 5G advanced standardization framework? That is also important element that when we are looking this enhances the coverage, we are not just looking like typically that, okay, this is the lowest modulation order, uh, or this kind of lowest data rate, but now we are looking really to improve the performance uh, that you get more throughput with the higher order modulations, QPSK, 16, QAM. So that means that in a rural area, it's not this smallest data rate that improves, but really the higher data rates get better reach when you get more power from the devices uh, with uh, with those uh, kind of higher order modulations and supporting higher data rates. Oh, okay. Then uh, third question, new services. You mentioned XR as an example of 5G advanced use case. What are the use cases 5G advanced is going to improve? Mm. True, I mean, 5G advanced is not only for Facebook metaverse optimization. Mm -hmm. Clearly we have also some other targets. And, and, and indeed, uh, like we mentioned, uh, we are designing the new radio for the IoT communication, for car-to-car -car communication, satellite communication, drone communication, train communication, meaning that uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, potential use cases will be expanded a lot. And that is the whole idea here. 
And because it's going to be used for the critical communication, then of course we also need to focus on the resilience and reliability. Okay, we'll definitely also ask uh, to Qualcomm later to the SVP to Enrico the same question about 5G Advanced and what it means for the device is very interesting. Um, then the synchronization without GPS, I think we, I, we touched it uh, very briefly. Can you elaborate on the 5G Advanced synchronization? Um, for example, how is 3GPP planning to deploy it in practice? Well, basically we would need to have, of course, the accurate timing reference uh, connected to the core and then we provided that uh, timing reference to the core to the radio and now of course we need to be able to estimate basically measure very very accurately first that what kind of uh, delay we are getting between the end terminal and and, and the network so that we are able to compensate uh, then uh, what is the latency or delay in delivering the timing signal from this uh, atomic clock or whatever is the reference all the way to the handset and those are the means that when we are able to really measure propagation delay then we are also able to compensate those and and provide the accurate timing reference can, that can meet the needs be that for banking industry or transportation industry so forth and uh, either as a as a backup or indeed as an alternative to satellite well okay then the flexible uplink downlink is there any modifications to tdd subframe structure uh, so the the uplink downlink share in 5g advanced or earlier releases to better utilize the uplink without increased interference true i mean you could say that tdd so time division duplex uh, in theory is extremely flexible i mean you can define your uplink downlink split uh, in theory uh, as you wish in practice, however, the limiting factor is that, uh, that because of interference, we need to have the same uplink downlink split in different uh, cells and also by different operators. Now, the idea in 5G advanced and 5G evolution is that, uh, that if we can better control and cancel interference, then it would be more practical and more feasible to also change the configuration. And these are exactly the topics that we have now uh, in 5G advanced to cancel and control the interference. So yes, you could say there will be more flexibility in the future compared to what we have today. Okay. And key element really to identify that do I interfere my own base station that is next door or neighbor operator's base station that is on the adjacent carrier before I start to playing with, with my uplink downlink allocations in, 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 in case of dynamic TDD. But that's what we are addressing in, in, in 5G advanced. Okay. And then, well, they keep coming. Legacy devices. Are 5G advanced benefits requiring completely new handsets? Or can are the release 15 to 17 UIS benefit from those changes? Well, basically, you, you need new handsets uh, uh, to get take benefit from, from these services because we add new features for the standards and uh, typically handsets themselves uh, don't get upgraded that much that uh, they would get the latest uh, uh, standard radio features just by software. On the network product side, of course, situation is often different. So there, typically, you get uh, features by, by software so that you are able to roll them out quickly. Mm. Thank you. Okay. It was our pleasure Andy. to be here. Okay. Thank you for Thank joining you, today.